Hi, I'm Marilyn San Clemente of Stamp with Marilyn, and welcome to my creative playground. Um, tonight, I'm going to show you these really cool easel cards. And an easel card, it's just a regular card that lays flat. And But what's really unique about it is you can use it on your desk or whatever, or as a decoration, and it creates a little easel. So it, it shows off the images you have stamped or whatever. And a couple of people have asked me, well, how do you write a message on it? Well, when you open it up, you've got this piece in here and you don't necessarily need to use a piece of designer paper that has a, a deep pattern like this. You could use a something that's a little bit easier pattern that you could also write on. So you can write a message on these. And I just think they're a really cool card. Last week, I think I ran through the um, daisy cards that I was doing for my stamp club. And one of those cards was this, oops, here we go, was this easel card that I made. And then another card that we made at Stamp Club was this, really pretty daisy. It's got multiple colors on it and it's got the mosaic background. And then um, this was a card that Lisa designed that I actually really liked. She used the mosaic background, but then she cut the daisies, she cut the background daisy, the larger part of the daisy, out of the designer paper, which I thought was a really unique way to do that. And then she added a couple of birds that she cut out of the designer paper. So I am actually in the process of putting this together in a tutorial. You can check out my uh, daisy tutorials. Um, and I've got this cute little purse that my other Don Line Ruth made with it. So welcome. Welcome to Marilyn's Creative Playground. And um, so what we're going to look at tonight is we're going to make a couple of these easel cards and I was just going to show you the process for that. What I like to do when I have cards like this is I make a cheat sheet that um, I can then file away so I always have that pattern. Um, so we're going to score four and a quarter like we always do and then I'm going to move this over and I don't know if you know um, with the cutter with our that um, we have, there's an inch and a quarter off on the one side, so you can use that. So I'm going to then cut down one and a quarter to the four and a quarter mark, so right to my score line. And then I'm going to flip my cardstock over and I'm gonna cut at the one and, car blah, one and a quarter mark again right to that score line. And then, so now what you have is you have your card base that is four and a quarter. Um, so that means that this is four and a quarter. So we want to score this in the middle to create that little piece that you're going to use when you make the easel card. Okay, so again, here's the measurements. I'll put that there. So now what I'm going to do is score that center piece at two, and one eighth, which is half of one and a quarter. So I'm just gonna line that up, pull down my scoring blade, not my cutting blade, because I have been known to do that. I think we all have. Okay, and score that. So then we're going to fold that. Oops. Okay, and there's my easel card, or the beginnings of my easel card. So again, there's the measurements. Hopefully you can see that. I'll put this on there to hold that down. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, oh, where did I put my, there we go. Okay, here's my adhesive. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is to um, tape these two pieces down. So I'm just gonna use some of my adhesive. Okay, and then if you notice, um, I wasn't quite exactly even with my score or with my when I scored the card in half. So these pieces are a little bit longer. So what I like to do with something like that is just flip it over and trim it so that it's even. And you can use that card as the guide. So then you have these two nice little pieces. Get rid of those. Okay. There we go. 
So now the next thing that we're going to do, so here's our finished one. The next thing that we're going to do is I use the mosaic paper and I'm going to decorate the side. So these side pieces are one inch by four inches and then that gives you a little bit of um, a mat. So I'm just going to glue those down. And I love this mosaic paper. This is one of those papers where I like all 12 patterns, so I don't want to cut into anything. But it's one of those papers that you probably have to order two, um, two packages of. But Okay, oops, and I did not cut that one. So now I'm going to I'm going to put this piece here. So my center piece is three inches wide, so I'm going to trim that to two and seven eighths by um, two inches because these are two and one eighth. So I'm going to attach that. Oop. I think my tape is getting to the end. Okay. And then this one I need to trim a little bit. So this one I was going to use the back side, the yellow pattern, and I just need to trim that down a little bit. So we're going to trim just under three. And where's my thing? There we go. Okay, so I want to use that, that pretty yellow back side. Oops, and it looks like I might be working off camera again, so let me adjust that a little bit. There we go. Okay. So there's the basis of our card. So on this particular card, I used another piece of the mosaic paper for the center. So that is four inches by um, two and seven eighths for that center piece, that center layer. And I wasn't going to put that on this particular card. I actually used up all of that paper. So in this card, I'm just going to leave that center piece blank to stamp the image that I'm stamping. So in this case, the daisies, one shade darker. So I'm going to use a crushed curry, which is one shade darker than so saffron. And that way the image will stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to stamp my daisies. And what I like to do to make a nice full daisy is I use two images. So I'm going to stamp, oops, that didn't stamp. Huh. That didn't stay on very well. I have not had that happen with these um, new cling stamps, as they're very strong. Okay. And then I happen to have my oval. So I'm going to stamp the word smile. Like that. There we go on my oval. I see I have smoky fur here. Okay, now the other thing that I could do that I think would be a little bit different is because I'm not using a DSP in the centerpiece, I'm just going to stamp the fern a little bit. Just to make it, just to add a little bit more a little more of a touch to it. And I can make that go up above, like so. So in a sense, I'm making my own designer paper. Okay, so now I've, I'm using the larger punch and I'm punching out the daisy. When you're putting these daisies together, glue dots are going to be your friend. So what I'm going to do is do the big part of the daisy. And all I'm going to do is overlap so that the top daisy fills in where the second part of the daisy is. And then Same thing. Oh, 
Okay, and now, where did I put my, oh, there's the smile. Okay, I'm going to attach that to here. Now, the one thing that's important when you're putting these cards together is you want to use dimensionals on that bottom piece. And I've got the side piece of a, um, a sheet that I had left, which is great for when you've got long ovals like this. And the reason why you want to use dimensionals is you want that sentiment to stand up like that so that this will catch on it. Okay, and then the other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you use your bone folder and really crease that. Crease the folds and then crease this fold as well. There we go, like so. And now I'm going to put on my daisy. And what I like to do for the daisy is I just kind of fold the leaves up a little bit. I use my fingers and I kind of curl them up from the center. There we go. And I'll grab a dimensional and put that on. And then I want to add a little center to the daisy. And I like these faceted gems, whether you use the gold or the um, clear. It doesn't really matter. I've used both on these, but they're perfect for the center of the daisy because daisies look like they're faceted. Um, and then I, what I did was I cut one of the birds out of the paper. So now I'm just going to attach that off to the side so it looks like my bird is flying over. So again, we need a dimensional for that. Like that, there we go. And that's our finished easel card with the daisies. So I will put that over here. And then now, I'll show you, I love this stamp set, Sailing Home, with, I believe the name of the paper is Sailing Away. Um, it's, it's a really pretty stamp set. And what I love, one of the things that I really like about it is, I personally like um, lighthouses and boats and nautical things, um, since I live near the ocean. But I love the sentiments on this the set sail in the direction of your dreams, that would be perfect. Actually, I know someone that just retired from his job and that would be a great sentiment for him um, for a retirement card. So I've kind of had this in my head to use that. And then I like this one, let hope be your anchor through the storms of life. And that's another great one. And then I like you are my true north as well. So I, this, I just think that this set has some really great sentiments in it. And it's a good masculine set. The stamp set is sailing home, but this is the paper. So again, it's our regular um, 12 by 12 sheets and it's double-sided. So what I've done is I've just cut a little example to show you the double sides and it's got this really pretty um, paper with a compass on it. And then this piece actually has some maps on it. Um, this piece has the outline of the sailboats and then we've got a masculine stripe. Um, we have another piece that has the lighthouses on it with another stripe on the back. And then an, another stripe using the browns and the blues with a piece that has um, coral all in gray. So it's a completely gray piece. And then this really neat piece that has the ropes on it with um, a map type thing in the background. And then this piece, which has the new, um, the new in color. And then the back side of that, which is the actual compasses um, and the measuring items that they used to use in the olden days um, for maps. So this is the paper that goes with this stamp set. And it's just, I think it's a gorgeous masculine paper. I like it. Um, it's one of the, the better masculine papers that Stamping Up has had in a couple of years, I think. So, so let me show you how to do this one. 
And so what we're gonna do, again, I'll put this over here. I'll put my um, cheat sheet that I have. I'll set that aside. Okay, so we're going to use the scoring blade. We're going to score at four and a quarter. And then we're going to cut at one and a quarter halfway up on each side, on parallel sides. So our cuts will be parallel. They'll be on the same side. So two weekends ago, my team and I did our Creative Crafters Escape, and this was one of the sets that um, one of my team members, Jeannie, used, and she designed a really beautiful um, frame with it, sampler frame, and she also designed some cards that go with it. Oops, I forgot to do the score in the middle. Okay, so that's two and one eighth. So the cards and the samplers, um, the frame, um, we had three separate classes that day. We had this nautical class with the Sailing Home stamp set, um, which included the nautical frame and um, cards. Those, the tutorials have been documented and those will be going out on my website so that um, you can purchase the tutorials if you'd like to make them at home. So with this card, Again, this is the new in color, and I'm blanking on the name. Um, okay, but it will come to me. Um, something maybe sea spray, blue sea spray, or something, something like that. Um, so what I did was because this paper and this paper kind of um, you know blend together since the background is the same color, I mounted that on some pieces of Knight of Navy. There we go. It actually looks like I cut the crooked. So I'm going to line that up. I did cut crooked. Okay, and sometimes when I cut crooked, I can trim it by hand. And if I weren't doing this online, I would recut the piece, but since I'm on Facebook Live and I'm doing this online, I'll trim it by hand. Oops. So now back to my piece. So what I'm going to do is adhere down those two sides again. It just shows that not even demos are perfect. <laughs> I am def I'm certainly not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. I make my share of mistakes all the time. Okay, so I'm going to put this piece of the nautical paper um, with the compass in the middle. So this is four inches by two and seven eighths at, since this part is three inches wide. So. And as you can see, the back side of that has got that really cool nautical map on it. Okay, so there we go, so that's all lined up. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is on this one, I put the card together and I used um, a piece of the rope and the Sahara sand and they both have the Sahara sand background to them. And what I thought was it was just a little bit too light and the lighthouse didn't pop enough. So on this one, I am going to use the light blue stripe, which has this on the background. And I think that that will be, I think the lighthouse will stand out a little bit better on that. So this piece is two and seven eighths by two inches.
Okay, there we go. So that's going to look like that. And then what I'm going to do is, since I used this really pretty shape um, around the um, set sail in the direction of your dreams, I'm going to mount that on back of, on a piece of Sahara sand and Knight of Navy um, so that that will pop out a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to add this. Like that. And then, as I said before, you always want to use dimensionals on these. Where'd my dimensionals go? Now they're buried under all my cards that I've made. There we go. Okay, so I'll add some dimensionals to that. And again, the dimensionals, so I'm going to line that up, and the dimensionals will hold the easel part of the card up, like that. So what's really cool about this set, where do I put the stamp set? There it is, right in front of me. Okay, is this stamp set also has some really pretty designs that come with it. So. You can cut out, for example, this piece of rope. You can cut out a ship's wheel. And I need to put this on a magnetic sheet. Um, it has a piece of coral. Um, you can make a compass. Here's the little hand for the compass. Um, this is the outline of the frame that I used for that. And then it's got two different sailboats on it as well. And actually, let me put this, there we go, for the compass. Ah. There we go. That will work a little bit better. And what's really neat, oh, and then it also has this cute little banner as well. What's really neat is that larger sailboat, it actually cuts out so that it's clear. Oops. So that you get the outline, you get the outline of the ropes and the sails, which I thought was really neat. So it cuts in the middle there. So there's a nice set of dies with it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is decorate. Oops, and I didn't put those back in. Okay. So I think I will put the lighthouse. On the side, yes, I like that much better. On the blue, it's standing out much better. So I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on the lighthouse. There we go. Um, I'm just going to use a little bit of my adhesive. On the rope, I'll put the little boat down here. Okay, and then I'm going to put the other boat, the other sailboat. So, so there's my two sailing cards, and yes, I think that this, um, this is a better contrast. The lighter blue is a better contrast with the um, Knight of Navy that I used, uh, rather than the Sahara Sand. And I think it's probably because it has this Knight of Navy stripe in it, that it just doesn't show as qu quite as well. So, there's my two easel cards that I made, and... Um, as I mentioned, I will be um, putting those instructions together and putting the, oops, see if you can see them, okay? And um, 
I will be putting the tutorials out on my website. So if you're interested, stop by on Wednesday. Um, and if you haven't joined my newsletter, you can go out to stampwithmarilyn.com and sign up for my newsletter. And you don't necessarily have to be in the local area because, as I mentioned, I'm putting tutorials out of my website for different classes that I do and my team does. You don't necessarily need to be in our area. You can purchase the tutorials and make the classes on your own. So thanks for stopping by tonight. And if you're ready to put an order in and you don't have a Stamping Up demo, if you go out to my website, stampwithmarilyn.com, and click on Order Now, if you use the host code RU7TGHBY, I will send you a sampler of the Magnolia paper and a little bit of the Magnolia ribbon um, as a thank you gift. And thanks for stopping by. I uh, will talk to you soon. Bye.